Hi, this is Don McAllister and welcome to another edition of Screencasts Online. Now Acorn is my go-to app whenever I need to do some image creation or editing. I last covered the basics of Acorn way back in April 21 when version 7 first came out. As such, an update is well overdue and with the recent release of Acorn 8, I thought I'd take a look at the wealth of new features. Now it still might be worth checking out the basics of Acorn in show 1043, but I'll run through the core basics in the first part of this show and then move on to some of the newer features. Acorn 8 is available from the Mac App Store, as you might expect, but also directly from the developers uh, over at flyingme.com. Uh, it's actually uh, an independent software company with just two people. That's Gus and Kirsten Mueller. I think Gus is the main developer and Kirsten handles all the commercial side of things. And they've been going for ages. And I really do uh, want to support Gus and Kirsten because they do a fantastic job, especially with Acorn. There's also Retro Batch, which we've covered on the show before. I think uh, Alison did a great show about Retro Batch. And that allows you to do uh, batch image processing on your Mac. Uh, it's a very, very powerful uh, application. Well worth checking out. To actually buy it from here, if you scroll down, there is an online store. Now, Acorn 8 was released about a month or so ago, so there is still an introductory sale on the website. So hopefully you can snag it at the reduced price. But to be honest, even at the full price, it's still a bargain for the amount of capability within the app. So let's start Acorn from the Spotlight Finder. You do get this optional welcome screen. You can switch this off if you don't want it to appear each time. I tend to leave it switched on, to be honest, because it's quite useful. One thing I will point out, though, obviously this is a very brief introduction to Acorn, and there's no way that I could cover the entire functionality of the application. But they've got you covered because there is some great online documentation and also a whole list of detailed tutorials as well that you can access. These are all for free. Uh, you can go in. Uh, basically, anything that you want to do with Acorn, you'll be able to find it in here. So that's well worth uh, keeping in mind. But let's go ahead and create a new image. And selecting a new image gives you this uh, option box. So you can go and choose a preset for your uh, image size. So you can choose any of these presets. There's some iPhone presets here as well. You can create your own preset as well. But I'm just going to go ahead and stick with the default for now. Uh, you can also select either pixels, inches, or centimeters as the measurement for your image. The resolution 72 is normally good for on-screen work. You might want to bump that up to 300 if you're working on images for print documents. Image depth, which is the color depth. Uh, standard is 8, but you can go up to 16 or 32. You can actually also open 64 color images as well, but we'll leave that as is. Background color, you can have it white, black, or transparent. Let me go ahead and select white. Now, you'll probably also notice there is a From Clipboard button, which is grayed out at the moment. But if you have an image in your clipboard, uh, you can actually click on that button to create a new Acorn document directly with the image in your clipboard. And that's something I use quite a lot. So we'll just click on OK to create our new document. So this is the main user interface within Acorn, fairly standard. Down the side, you have your selection and drawing tools, etc. In the middle, we have a canvas then the right hand side. This panel is in two parts actually. The top part are your inspectors and the bottom part are your layers. Uh, you can split these out if you want. If we go to Acorn settings, uh, earlier versions of Acorn had it this as the default. So your tools in a separate palette and your inspectors in a separate palette here as well. But I'm going to go with the unified approach. We'll just pop that off. So over on the left hand side, we have our toolbox. And as we hover over each tool, you'll see you'll get a reminder of what the tool is and also the keyboard shortcut. So move is V. Uh, this is a zoom tool, Z. We've got the crop tool, which is C. Now, one thing to bear in mind as well is you'll see that some of them have these little blue triangles uh, by each tool. That just means if you click and hold, you'll see we have three different tools under this one particular icon. So the crop tool, the perspective fix and crop, and also the measurement ruler, which is a new tool that's available with Acorn 8. We'll take a look at that shortly. Um, also, another thing to bear in mind is as you change tools, the uh, information in the inspector changes as well. So that, for instance, if I go across to, uh, say, the paintbrush tool, you'll see I can go ahead and change the type of paintbrush. So I can change the size of it. Let's stick with basic round 20. Uh, change the opacity. Change the flow. Change the softness. Change the spacing and change the blending, etc. cetera. 